Hey, in this video I'm going to go through a couple of examples uh, where you're going to be finding the missing y coordinate when you're given the slope. So here are the instructions here. It says to find the value of y so that the line passing through the two points has the given slope. So in this problem, hey, we know the x coordinate is 3, but we don't know what the y coordinate is. Hey, and we know a second point, x coordinate 5 and y coordinate 8 and we know that the M is 2. So what we could do is we could just use, and I'll show you two ways to do it. You could use the formula where M equals Y sub 2 minus Y sub 1 over X sub 2 minus X sub 1. And if I were doing this, I would always make the Y's, <coughs> wherever the variable is, the second point, even though it's the first one listed, X sub 2 and Y sub 2. That makes this x sub 1 and y sub 1. This is m. Okay, so the formula has five variables. m, y sub 2, y sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 1. And here are the five things right up there that we just listed. Just a matter of substituting. m is 2, y sub 2 is y, minus y sub 1 is 5. x sub 2 is 3, minus x sub 1 is 5. And now we can do some math. If you look at the right-hand side of the equation in the denominator, it says 3 minus 5. Well, <coughs> oh, I see a mistake I made. Okay. Y sub 1 is 8, not 5. There we go. So then I would have y minus 8 on top, but 3 minus 5 we know is negative 2. And so there's my equation. I just need to solve this. Hey, well, there's a lot of different things you can do to solve it. Hey, if I were going to do this, I would multiply each side by negative 2. And if you multiply by negative 2, this is going to be negative 4. This would be just y minus 8. And now I'm going to add... 8 to both sides. And if you add 8 to both sides, this would be 4, and that would be y, and that's the answer. So the missing y coordinate is 4. Now, if you had the points 3, 4, and 5, 8, <coughs> that slope would be 2. So that's one way you can do it. Now, a second way, which sometimes would work, now you could make like a little tape. You have x, y, Hey, the points we have, we have 5, 8. And, and we're trying to get 3 something. We just don't know what that something is. Hey, we know that the slope, hey, it tells you what the slope is in the problem. Slope is, remember, change in y over change in x. If I'm going to a table, that's how I would think of it. Now, if the slope is 2, I could write that as a fraction as 2 over 1 or negative 2 over negative 1. So if you think about that, okay, I'm trying to get from 5 to 3, okay, but I have to go x is my bottom. So it's either going to go up 1 or down 1. Well, I'm going from 5 to 3, I'm going down. So if I go down 1 first, okay, if I go down 1, that would make me have 4. But every time my x goes down 1, my y has to go down 2. Okay, that's what my slope says. And so if I go down 2, that would make this be 6. Now then if I keep doing that, go down 1 again, oh look, I'm at 3. So now I would go down 2 again, and whatever number I end up at, which in this case would be 4, that's my answer, and that's what I found here. Now, that's one where a table works nicely. Uh, it would be a lot more difficult if it was a fraction. Uh, and I could have done it the same way by starting with 3 and worked my way you know, from the bottom. But again, I was going, my x went from 5 to 3, so I went down 1 each time. And then down 2 each time on the y, I end up at 4. Now, here's another one probably going to end up being a little bit more difficult. Remember the formula. 
Okay, the first way I'll do it is go through and plug everything in. My slope is 9 halves. Okay, my y sub 2, I would always do the y. So I'll take the, this is y sub 2. Okay, minus y sub 1. That's that. So minus negative 7. And then on the bottom, x sub 2, which is negative 2, minus x sub 1, which is 5. Well, I just do whatever math I have. Hey, this minus a negative, I would rewrite that as y plus 7. And negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7. Now you just solve this equation. Hey, you could either multiply both sides by negative 7, like I did on the last one, or hey, this right here is actually a proportion. And since it's a proportion, I could cross multiply if I wanted. That's how you solve proportions. I'd have 2, and I'd have to multiply that by y plus 7. I need parentheses since there's two terms. And I would have 9 times negative 7. This would be 2y plus 14, and this would be negative 63. Now if I just solve it, 2y would be equal to negative 77, and y would be equal to negative 38 and a half. Again, all I did was take my formula, I plugged in everything that I knew, I solved the equation that was left, turned out it was a proportion. Had I done the mu multiplying by negative 7 on the side, I, then I would have had whatever 3.5 times negative 7 is, I, and then when I subtract the 7, or sorry, 4.5 times negative 7, I, that would be negative 31.5, and, and then when you subtract 7 on both sides, you get negative 38.5. If you were going to choose to do a table again, remember this top number is the change in y, and this is the change in x. Okay? And if positives don't work, you could consider negative 9 and negative 2, because that's the same thing as positive 9 halves. So if I work my way in my table and think about what I've started with and what I know, I have 5, negative 7, and we're trying to work our way to get negative 2 in some number, and whatever that number is is going to end up being our answer. Okay, well, remember, x is going down 2. Okay, so I can go down 2, and if I go down 2, that would make me be at 3. Now then I want to go down 2 again, because I'm trying to get to negative 2. Down 2 again gets me to 1. I'm still not there. Go down 2 again. And that's going to get me to negative 1. Okay, but now, at this point, I can't go down 2 again, because I'll end up at negative 3, so I actually go down 1. Now what I'm going to do is go to the other side, and every time I went down 2, I'm going to go down 9. Okay? So every time I went down 2. Go down 9 there. Go down 9 again. And then here, when I went down 1, hey, that's half of 2. So now I'm going to go down 4.5, which is half of 9. And if I fill the numbers in, going down 9 is going to get me to negative 16. Going down 9 again is going to get me to negative 25. Going down 9 again is going to get me to negative 34. And when I go down 4.5, that's going to get me to the answer, which is negative 38.5. And, and that's the same answer. It's a little bit tougher doing it that way. Hey, with the table, hey, I recommend just plugging them into the formula, solving the equation, doing the algebra to figure out what the missing y is.